Hey, welcome to the galley remodel. Uh, what we're going to be doing is taking the top of this galley off, the handrails, the side rails, everything, and replacing them with new ones. Uh, these were pretty stained, really old, uh, kind of things like that, so they really wanted to kind of remodel it. So what we're going to end up doing is pulling these side, side handrails off. They're not going to be saveable because they are epoxied on. So the first thing we need to do is remove this slider rail that the doors for the cabinet sit in and making sure that the tip of the screwdriver is in there really well before we pull it out because we don't want to strip the heads of the screws. Uh, I'm using a scraper to get underneath it and it's one of the easiest tools that I've found to get this done with, uh, pulling this rail off. Next thing we're going to do is get these handrails off. Um, and I want to try to save as many as, as many of them as I can. So I'm using a center punch to punch the uh, bungs out. And this is going to be where I start my drill bit. I'm using uh, the drill bit to get down in there. And then I use the punch to kind of pop the glue. Uh, again, make sure that I have a really good grip with the screwdriver and pulling all the screws. And then once you get them out of all the edges, uh, it's time to go ahead and remove them. Uh, again, the uh, scraper tool seems to be one of the best tools. Uh, these are epoxied on, so had to break out the Dremel Multi-Tool. I have a review on this, and you can click right here to go to it. Uh, again, these were epoxied on, so you're not going to be able to save most of them. Uh, once you get them all pulled off, uh, then we're going to start working on plumbing and pulling the sink. So I want to make sure that my drain is, or my uh, valves are closed. Uh, I went ahead and pulled all the plumbing, pulled the sinks out, and the top is off. You can also click on the icon of Merlin right here at the top and go to how to remove this top. All right. After the top removal, you'll see that there's tons of glue on top of, of the countertop, and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, using uh, oak here to build the sink up because the sink is a smaller sink. I use 610 to glue together and then rebase on the bottom. That was a test fit of the sink, and this is a test fit of the two corners of the laminate. Again, using the multi-tool to uh, remove the trim off of the uh, stove section here. Uh, it's the only tool that's possible to actually get this done with in any kind of amount of time. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and get all this glue off of here. There's nothing that removes this kind of uh, or contact cement except for sanding it off pretty much. Uh, once we've got the main part sanded off as much as what we'd like, then I'm using a hand, uh, the multi-tool again to uh, get around all the edges that I can. Uh, cleaning the area up really well. I'm using uh, acetone here and this will clean it really well and you want to make sure that there's nothing left on here. And if you find any high spots or anything that you would like to get off I use a chisel to do that with and then cleaning again. Uh, now I'm just going to block off my uh, laminate here really quick. Uh, all I'm doing is just really cutting a a, a rough outline so that I can get in easily and do my full trim. None of it's actually mounted down. I've just got weights on it just for the quick cut here. All right, I went ahead and take that out of the way. Now I'm going to start prepping the rest of the area. And I want to get into the edge here really good because it's flat edge of my laminate's going right up against this wall. So I want to get that corner really good and then all of this is getting revarnished and I want to revarnish this before I put the laminate on. So you can click right here and uh, it'll take you to more varnishing or how to varnish videos that I have and uh, you want to use the same uh, technique as I used on the floors right here. So just click on the Merlin icon right up there and it'll take you right to the floor video at the moment. Um, and it'll open up in another window. So now I want to tape off all the edges of that I don't want glue to get on. Uh, all these inside edges. So I'm just prepping here for the uh, contact cement. So the green tape you'll see uh, is on the inside. And I don't want glue to get down in there and I don't want glue up against the wall. So I'm just prepping all my edges here uh, for the uh, contact cement. And then I'm going to clean everything up really good again. 
Uh, again, I'm using acetone. And I'm going to do the same thing on the backing. And I use a longer roller, and I just cut it into thirds, and it saves money, and it saves, uh, you know, mostly money, <laughs> which is a big thing. So first thing I want to do with the uh, contact cement is put a layer of contact cement on the countertop. And you just roll it out. Uh, be careful. Don't get it on anything. Contact cement is super messy. Uh, after you've put the layer on here, you want to put another layer. You want to put a layer on your actual laminate. And then once you get it on the laminate, you need to let this dry. Contact cement does not work unless it's dry. Uh, and you want to, you, it, I think it's a two hour time. Uh, so you want to let it dry for about two hours. It should be slightly, slightly tacky. Uh, then once you've got uh, one or two layers of your contact cement on, uh, then I'm going to lay my laminate down. I want to make sure that I get my edges perfectly lined up. If you don't have them perfectly lined up, you put it down, you're not going to get it back off in one piece. And if you do, you're lucky uh, without any kind of damage. So you want to make sure you're very critical at this point. Uh, now I use dowels, and you can see I stuck a little piece of wood in there too because I ran out of dowels uh, underneath it just to put down the pieces little by little or the sections little by little. I uh, start to roll it out. This isn't my main rolling. Uh, now on these rollers, um, over time they'll get a little bit squeaky and stuff like that. The best thing to do is just pull that roller tip off and then uh, just grease it on the inside slightly and it'll roll like better than new. These things are awesome. Um, I had to do that right after this actually. Uh, before you put the glue down or put your countertop down, one thing to keep in mind is make sure that you do all your sanding that you need to make all your levels level. Um, right. Once I've got my countertop glued down, now it's ready to route. So I drilled my holes, and the, them were just starter holes for my router. And then I put the router in and just go around my edges. Uh, you want to be very careful because some of these edges are actually beveled. So you need to make sure you have a good bit or the perfect bit for the bevel. And once I do that, I just get everything out of the way. And then just go back and double trim my edges like this. And it knocks off any of that extra cardboard from the laminate. After the laminate top is on, I can go ahead and start drilling on my holes for my plumbing. Now, with laminate, you want to make sure that you've got a backing on it so that you don't crack the laminate coming through it or it rips the edges or anything like that. I always use a backer for it. And this is the laminate completely done. And now we have to repair this wall. Now I've already, um, if you can see behind the paper, there's uh, little holes there uh, that were for some control units. Uh, now I've filled the control units with some uh, solid wood and this is gonna be the template to make the uh, teak uh, finish. So now I'm tracing it onto my uh, my teak laminate here and uh, test fitting it. Now I want to make sure that this is on before I do my back seal behind the sink. So I prep in the area, sanding where I want it. You can see I've put the two blocks in and they are uh, epoxied in. Uh, once I've prepped the area, now I want to double check my fit for my uh, teak laminate here and then uh, tape off where I don't want any glue again because this is going to be put on with contact cement as well. So now I'm using a brush. Now you can use a larger brush. Um, I actually ran out of brushes so this was the largest brush that I had for that. So once I got the contact cement on both sides uh, and it's dried, now I'm going to be very very careful lining it up again and putting it on. As you can see I've cut it just to the shape of everything and now I'm going to go ahead and roll it out after I get this stuck on really good. Uh, and it takes approximately, I think, I think it's like 20 pounds or something. I'll have to look it up again. It's in my other video um, for the contact cement to hold properly. So you want to make sure you push really well. And I use the tip of a brush to get all my corners, uh, the back end of it, and it works great. And here you go with the finished uh, teak laminate on the wall. Now the next thing I'm going to do is varnish that. Again, I'm going to use the same technique that I use for the teak floors. And you can click on that link again right here on Merlin. All right now I'm going to make the uh, the laminate for the cooler. Uh, these go on the top of the cooler or the top they're the tops of the top of the cooler. There we go. <laughs> so 
And what I've did is I've made like this jig and you can kind of see how I use the old uh, top as what I'm going to use to wrap the new one with. So especially for the where the handles go. And you can kind of see I just lined up my my bit uh, bearing with the bottom one and cut it out. And here's the finished product of cutting out the holes for for that. And then once I put it on the tops, I just routed the edges normally and you get a perfect top uh, for the coolers. All right, now I sealed it. It's time to go ahead and seal the back of the sink um, so that water doesn't get underneath the edge here. Now this looks like white. It is not white, it's clear. It goes on white and it dries clear. First time I ever used this, it scared the crap out of me when I put it on because the thing said clear and it was not clear. <laughs> but as you can see, it's starting to dry here and it's starting to dry clear. And then right here, it is clear. So we've got everything laminated and good to go right there. Um, and now it's time to put in the plumbing. So replumb your sink. Um, it's good to reroute your 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 plumbing if you can and make it look really nice. And I tried to do that here as much as I could with the room I had. Uh, and then I'm getting my holes ready for the actual screws that come through or the studs that come through the back of the sink, as you can see right there. Uh, and they fit right down into the corner. Now this is just a test fit. Uh, as you can see, the tape's still on there. Uh, when you want to mount, when you get ready to mount it permanently, make sure you got everything off and it's all clean. And you use a Sikaflex or some other type of sealant to seal your sink down. Some sinks don't have the studs to actually bolt them down, so this, that Sikaflex will actually be what holds it on there. Uh, here's the finished product, plumbed out and the sink in. Um, I hadn't received the rails yet, so I'm about to build the uh, or put the laminate on the shelf that's above the sink. Uh, that was the template, and you can see how to make a template in one of my prior videos. Uh, now I've prepped it, and I'm getting it ready to put this top on. Uh, and I want to use the same techniques as what I've used before, or what we just used in doing the galley in putting this top on. The only difference is the template. So just make sure you check out the video for the template. And here we go with my outro, and hope you like my new one. Hey guys, welcome to my new outro. As you can see, I've got three videos over here. Uh, the first one's going to be the continuance of this video, which is going to show you how to do the rail installations on uh, heads or uh, galleys, which is what this one's on. Uh, there are no videos that I found out there on how to actually put the handrail uh, or side rails on these guys. So this one should be the only one. Uh, that's why I decided to make it its own video. Uh, other than that, the other two videos are probably going to take you to one of uh, my other two how-tos. And one of them may be the haul-out. Uh, we just did a haul-out, hence why it's taken me so long to get these new videos up. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to get all this video edited and get them up pretty soon. Uh, there's not a lot of how-tos on the haul-out because haul-out uh, costs money per day and it's a lot of time and uh, I was just able to do more before after type stuff so I'll have that one up soon so you can check that out. I'm also planning on doing a lot more uh, videos here really soon. Should have transmission replacement and engine replacement and uh, a few other things like that. Uh, but my main thing here is, is I would like you guys to, if you could, comment down below and Put in what you would like to see done or what how to's you would like to see and I'm going to try to focus on if I if I can't find an actual job to do them on then I will try to get the materials and possibly do it on my boat or just do it on some fake materials for you guys so you can see how to do it uh, but anyway uh, don't forget to do that just comment down below and let me know what you'd like some help with and hopefully you're enjoying my videos and I thank you very much for watching my channel and the videos and again don't forget to subscribe you can also go to the channel and see the other videos I have right below that and uh, you guys have a good one and I'll see you soon